If I were starting my print on a man journey today, I wouldn't even consider starting it on Shopify. And I know that might sound controversial, but after selling over a million dollars on Etsy, I've realized something very important. And that's that marketplaces like Etsy and Amazon are the future. And there's a reason why I focus all my time in my testing there. And that's what we'll talk about in this video today. So let's get into it. So Naval Ravikant, one of the smartest thinkers around, in my opinion, he mentioned a while back in a podcast that he did that eventually there will be basically one or maybe two places that people will go to do the shopping. And honestly, we're already there. And I'll show you some statistics to actually prove that for you. So first off, here are some Amazon statistics from 2025. So Amazon holds 37.6% of the US e-commerce market. That's insane if you think about it. So most people shop their stuff on Amazon. That's the first thing. Apart from that, Etsy themselves, they ha have had about roughly like 90 million buyers ever since 2021. So a lot of people are already going to these platforms and they already have trust with their platform and they already have the inbound traffic. But most importantly, the customers have a buying intent. And honestly, with Shopify, you're just a random site uh, and you're hoping to get these impromptu buyers to actually purchase from you. But with Etsy or Amazon, the customer actually come with their wallets wide open, ready to purchase. And that makes a huge difference because who like would you tr trust Amazon or like a random shop that just sells mugs that hasn't even been around that long? You would definitely like trust Amazon since they've been there since 94 or Etsy that's been there since 2005 because they have a real tangible brand. But let me be super clear on this. Shopify is awesome later. The key thing is that, is that you should only pursue that once you're not a beginner. And here's why. Like you have no brand trust when you actually you have your own Shopify store because no one will know about your website at all. And I hear a lot that like you want to do Shopify to create your own brand, but to really touch on what a brand is and how to actually create a brand, like a real brand that people know about, that people can like understand, okay, I go to this site to purchase this. It takes a long time to establish that. Like Etsy started in 2005 and Amazon started in 1994. Like why not just make life easy and sell on the places that already have like established brands and like strong inbound traffic. It makes it so much easier to actually like just get the sales because do you want to spend like five to ten years just creating a brand or do you, or do you actually want to create a sustainable print on demand business plus apart from that on shopify the moment you actually hit the sales tax threshold you'll need to collect sales tax in that case and there's no grace period at all for this you will need to do that the like the second that you actually hit the threshold plus you will also need to get resale certificates for every single state in the US, unless you want to pay taxes, like product taxes on your production fees as well, which will squeeze your margin out. Apart from these, like these tax costs that just squeezes the margin, if you ever want to test something on Shopify, you will need to drive traffic to it. And to drive traffic, you generally use Facebook ads or like meta ads, whatever you want to call it, because there's no inbound traffic to your store. That means you have to spend some money to actually just see if something works or not. So it costs a lot to do that. But on Etsy, it's a lot cheaper because like on Etsy, if you want to test a listing to see if it works, it'll cost you 20 cents in comparison to paying a lot more money for Facebook ads just for test to test out one listing or like one shirt. Plus, if I'm just doing research, where like would I go to do that? To do research on what to, to design, how to make my offer and so forth. Well, I would mainly go to the place that's associated with buying these types of items, which is Etsy and Amazon. And you'd use Everbee to like get, get the master list to see what common denominators there are in, in the design. So you can have a well-researched design with a good basis for that. But again, the key thing with this is like, if you also need Everbee, you want to just put your listing up within the competition so to see if it actually works in the platform itself, because that will let you know that even with this whole competition, your listing sells, which means that it's good. But like, if you want to test it out, now you have to go back to Shopify. That doesn't just, doesn't make sense in my opinion. Want to just test the listing itself out to see if it actually works on Etsy. And then once you have actually validated the idea, then take it on Shopify. Like it doesn't make sense to just to do all the research to see what actually works on Etsy and then not test it on the site itself. Like if you can make it work in the, in, within the competition and you do all the research using Everbee and stuff like that, like then you actually know if it works or not. But like on Shopify, you just pay a lot of money to see if you get one sale here and there, whereas you'll have a much better cost efficient way to actually test things if you use Etsy and just start off 
at least on Etsy. But here's another thing, like Etsy just teaches you fast. You're pre competing with good sellers and with by paying like two, uh, like 20 cents on a listing, you'll quickly know if something works or not. It's a great way to test something to actually see if something works. But instead of just paying 20 cents a pop, you will have to pay a lot more in actually like driving traffic to your Shopify store to actually know if something sells or not. For a beginner who doesn't know how to design, like just like I did in the beginning, like it's just like not a cost efficient way to actually learn how to design and put your ropes in. Because you need to get good at design to actually make this work. And you don't need to be like a super good designer because I'm still not, but you need to understand how to work the whole POD thing. And you can only do that by just trying a lot and testing a lot. But testing in the Shopify realm will cost you a lot more because you're not just paying 20 cents for a listing fee. And I mentioned this before, but like the biggest and most important advantage that these marketplaces have is that the customer comes to the marketplace with their wallets open. Like they are there to buy the thing that you are selling. If someone wants a gift for Father's Day, for instance, and they search gift for Father's, called Father's Day, then they want to purchase a gift for Father's Day. So they, they have their wallets open, ready to purchase if it meets their uh, what they want. But with Shopify, running ads, hoping to get these imprompt buyers to actually just buy from you. And it's not a cost efficient way to learn the ropes with POD. And I mean, like for myself, like it took me a year to get good at this. And I did this constantly and I listed a ton of things to really get good. It was my like sole focus for more than a year, but it took at least a year to even get good at this. And if I would have the fees, like the Shopify fees, which are just like 33 pounds just to have the Shopify store itself, and plus like the research software and stuff like that, like I wouldn't be able to do that because I was, I was strapped for cash. Just like many of you on the other end are too. It's a much more cost efficient way to start on Etsy, learn the ropes on Etsy, because it just costs 20 cents a listing to actually list something. And then of course there's more costs with like the transaction fees and processing fees. It's a much more like newbie friendly way to actually start your print on demand journey. Because again, like Shopify, it will cost you a lot of money until you have an email list that you can like continually sell to. But it costs a lot to get to that point. Okay, now don't get me wrong. Shopify is really, really good, but only at a later stage when you've actually validated your winners. That's when you should diversify to Shopify because when like the first income stream is overflowing, which is Etsy in this case, that's when you diversify to something else because you still need to focus all your attention to Etsy to make that work and then you diversify. Plus like Printify integrates seamlessly with both platforms. So using Printify for both Etsy and Amazon will work really, really easy. So all of like the integrations that you need to make both the platforms work will work really, really easy and seamless. So. But you, again, you only do that when you're at a point, the first income stream, which is Etsy, is overflowing. Because that's how you know that you can actually switch gears to Shopify and be ready to take on all of the problems and all of the obstacles to make that work at the time. Because you've already done the groundwork on Etsy. But also, I talked a lot about research in this, like earlier here. And it's one of the most important things to actually make sales on Etsy. Like you can't just put something up and expect that to get sales. Again, if someone search for, searches for a Father's Day gift, you want to match their like their expectation with your design. And I talk a lot about research and stuff like that in this video right here. So if you want to learn more about that, I suggest watching that video. Anyhow, I'll see you in the next one.